Welcome, everybody. I'm John Zadar, a.k.a. The Stocks Wizard. You are watching On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. And that's exactly what we've got for you today, folks. We are taking a look at Impact Fusion International, ticker IFUS, on the OTC market. IFUS is a health and wellness company whose mission is to invent and develop products using Nutramastic, a strong antibacterial agent. Their products, they assist in the digestive health of both animals and people and bring a host of benefits to the world. Now, folks, I want you to know something right up front. I am not hyping this company. I believe in it. This company just hasn't got a disruptive technology. They've got a disruptive technology that has a list of benefits as long as my arm. And I can't find any downside. I can't find any side effects that we're going to have to deal with with this new technology. So I am very excited about this. And to tell us more about all that they are involved with, we have the CEO of IFAS with us today. This is Mark Walter. Hello, Mark. How are you today? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I am very, very happy to have you here. We had planned on doing this interview about a month ago, originally, but you're a busy man. You had a lot of people and places to go because you're building the business. So I know we've got a lot of great updates. But before we get into that, Mark, I have no clue who's going to be watching this video. And I do know that a lot of people watching it are going to have friends and family who are ranchers, who are farmers. So before we jump into all those updates you've got for us, can you give us a little background on the company and what your operations are all about? Well, the company is everything revolves around Nutramastic. Mm -hmm. And Nutramastic is uh, an ancient formula that we made that I made better. And um, I have added other things, including technology. But I'm, uh, coming from the background that I come from, which is manufacturing, I had a guy tell me a long time ago, he says, when you're going into this, don't do it like Detroit. When you're putting in a windshield, it costs you a million dollars. He said, look at what the ranchers and the farmers are doing. And he said, then try to alter it to what you want to achieve. And uh -huh. so when I look back on uh, even Detroit, they if you came in and you were from a farm or a ranch, they'd hire you. If you were from a city, they wouldn't. And <laughs> what I find is that ranchers and farmers get it done. And that's what I'm all about. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to waste time. I want to get it done. If I don't believe in something, you'll see it on my face. I can't even sell it to you. And uh, so Nutramastic, what it's built around. So when I, if, if uh, you take a look at the ranch that or the uh, sugar mill that we're in, um, right. you know, when you walk into it, it's huge. And we look at the acreage, it's 75 acres. And um, so I started moving an equipment that I had altered. Some of it, I just got out of a field and I built it. And it, uh, it's the only factory in the world that does what it does. And I'm proud to say that. Uh, so we have a, a footprint that uh, is really a footprint we can put anywhere where they got a sugar mill in the world. If they're, if they're using bag ass and, and we, can, we can take this footprint and put it in and we can start making the product. And tell us a little bit about this product that you're referring to over and over again well the product we, we make is uh something called sgp plus and okay. the reason why i call it sgp plus is because i don't want the word to be bag ass and uh you know bag ass <laughs> is crushed sugar cane and to be honest with you a cow will lay on it they'll they'll poop on it and they'll pee on it but they won't eat it and when we process it with our technology they'll eat it first time and they'll not eat the first time it takes and it takes a lot of the line items out, which if you look at a rancher or, or a farmer, he's a businessman. He understands line right. costs. And uh, so when he when he's figuring that, he's saying to himself, well, I got to put in hay and I got to put in maxi gain and I got to put in this and I got to put in that. When it's all said and done, he's got a whole list of items, including, including minerals that he has to use that are that are adding to his cost. So most of the guys, that are running these uh, ranches and farms, they aren't making money right now. The cost of grain and the cost of uh, hay is, is through the roof. Mm -hmm. So when I walk in and I say, well, I'll tell you what, if I can give you something that you don't use any hay, 
use 80% SGP plus and uh, what, whatever crude protein you're using, use 20%. And that's it. You don't have to add minerals to it. You don't have to add anything to it. You just let them eat it. And they'll have weight gain that you've never seen. Um, can you imagine? And I know you can, I know anybody out there can figure this out. There's no smell. There's no smell to the cow manure. And yeah, I was reading that your Nutramastic, being an antibacterial, it just has so many benefits. As you said, the smell of the urine and the poop. I drive down the road. I live here in Michigan. We got lots of farms around here. You mm -hmm. can smell when you're approaching a farm. Before you see it, you know it's there. So that would be a nice benefit. Not to mention that is methane, that CO2 escaping. So there's a lot of things that your product deals with that we haven't even touched on to yet. The benefits, not just for the cows, but for sanitation, for the uh, ecology. Before I give it all away, keep on going, Mark. Well, you know, you're right. And when you go out to Texas, which again, I'm from, I'm from Michigan and I've, I've oh. owned businesses in a lot of places and uh, multiple countries and I look at uh, when I go to Texas, for instance, or even Wisconsin, where they got feeder lots or mm -hmm. or dairies, you can smell them long before you see them. You know, and, and so with all that in mind, I kept saying to myself, OK, what am I seeing here? Yeah, a logical man says, OK, I have no smell. Well, where'd the smell go? It went into digestion. So, for instance, if the, the rumen, which is the four stomachs of a cow, which is basically like a... Uh, a processor of, of um, uh, let's say, um, paper, a paper processor. Okay. It's a machine, and that machine does, every stomach's got its purpose. Mm -hmm. And what is the goal? Is to deliver it to the small intestine, so the small intestine will absorb it. If it doesn't absorb it, it comes out as waste. Right. So when I first time I saw a, a, a feedlot, uh, I saw a mound of black stuff, and I saw one one uh, uh, cow or one bull standing on top. And I said to the guy I was with, my scientist, I said, what, what, what is that? He said, it's their own manure. I said, what are they doing with that? They're feeding it to the cows with corn. So the what? cow, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I said. I said, what? So why do you think it smells? And then there's always a pond right by there where everything uh, goes to it and if you if you went in that pond and you had an open cut or something, you you die of bacteria, bacteria right. uh, poisoning. So right. that's so what I saw is that that it's not what you eat, it's what you absorb. So if you're a human or you're your dog or you're a horse, same thing. If you're a pig, it's the same thing. If you're not digesting it properly, and everybody probably knows about genetically modified products gmo yes body body doesn't recognize it and so with that um i feel blessed that i can take this process and i can deliver it to the small intestine and you know i always liked it in any plant that i've i've owned it you could change one thing in that plant but if it, it but it doesn't affect the flow or the outcome at the end of the plant always. You've got to analyze everything in the chain of things. Sure. I look at, um, when I look at things, I like simple. So when I, when I look at the, the cow, you can tell by what you put in and what comes out. And so I looked at some of the sciences being done now, and there's a guy named Dr. Uh, Wells, who's with the Nobel uh, Institute, mm -hmm. and he developed... A, a, a scoring process for manure. You got a number number two manure. You got a number three. You got a number five. Well, number I three was looking one. forward to this part of our conversation, talking oh, about yeah. the crew patties because that's where the evidence lies. Well, we talk we talk a bunch of I kid people. We're going to talk about a bunch of crap here. Yeah. So uh, you go for I, it, Mark. This is an adult show. We can do it. Okay. Great. So we work with a ranch up in uh, Jefferson, Texas, which are good friends of ours. They're stockholders and for what it's worth, but they believe in it. And everybody that works there believes in it. And so when you start feeding the product, all of a sudden you start getting number three cow bodies. They aren't running. In fact, one time I was, my first feedlot too, I went to, 
the guy that I was with, the scientist, grabbed me and pulled me to the side. I said, what, what the heck are you doing? And he says, and then all of a sudden, that cow let loose and it hit my car. And so I said, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I didn't realize coming from Detroit that could happen. But um, so the bottom line is that you can tell by what you put in a cow, what comes out is what's happening. So you can analyze. Well, you know what they've always told us? Garbage in is garbage out. You, you got it, John. Every every time. So I look at that and I say, okay, that that is what we're doing. That's what's going on inside. So we also started seeing things that, uh, uh, like, like one day the, the the person actually brought my attention that there was no smell it was a nine year old girl that was in visiting the ranch up in Texas, and she says. Uh, you know, Mr. Mark, there, I can't smell the crap. And sure enough, we couldn't, you know, from the mouth of babes, right? <laughs> right. And then uh, the other day, yeah, the other day, probably a couple of months ago, we started seeing that if you've ever been around a cow, the flies are so bad that if yeah. you're in your car, you got to shut the windows. They're all over you. Yes. And these, these poor things are suffering. It, it, they, they, uh, they transfer disease. Yes. And, um, and on and on. So we found that, uh, you know what, there's no flies. And look at some of the videos that are on, on our YouTube channel of the cows. They're relaxed. There is no flies. As and you can see on the screen right now, folks, those cows look happy, don't they? It really did bother me. I would go to these cow places, <laughs> cow places, and I would see flies. I mean, loaded around their eyes, around their tail. The tail is constantly whipping at them. I felt miserable for those oh. cows. They must have been miserable. They're suffering. I went to one up in um, uh, Wisconsin that we're going to work on a project for, and Greenpeace is all over them. And uh, they have a uh, room for about 12,000 12, cattle, and they're at about 8,500 now. They've got, uh, they've got a hospital that, is, that I find that in every, every place that, have, that the cows have disease. What is the disease? Is the lung disease? And it's um, uh, the udders are red and the butts are red. What's that caused from? H. pylori. Do you know that that Nutramastic kills H. pylori? We have lab yeah. tests. We have lab tests that show that. And um, so the they showed me uh, a swimming Olympic swimming pool size uh, manure catcher that was 12 feet deep of liquid manure. Now, oh. if you, now, if you live around that place, it ain't a good place to live. And we can we can help them change that because if what's going in is coming out not smelling, what do you think the ultimate result is? And they can take in that uh, manure and they can put it on crops. So, I just read that the other last night, as a matter of fact, another piece of information I was astonished by mm -hmm. that they can actually use your product as a fertilizer. Yeah. Right. And the, what we're finding in our garden, our scientists has running, been running the program. We're finding that uh, the roses are three times the size. Every every vegetable is bigger. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to live in Jackson, Michigan with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. my, grandfa my grandfather always used to make us go out to the local uh, ranch and get manure and put it in his garden. And we kept kidding him, you know, it's going to smell like crap. And he says, you know, my, my, my garden is going to be flourishing in July and August when everybody else is dying. Right. And sure enough, every year his tomatoes were big, his, his watermelons, the corn was, was flourishing. Yeah, I heard about 30 to 40% extra growth from using yes. your product rather than these mineralized uh, types of fertilizers, chemical fertilizers. I don't even like yeah. that word. Well, we even have uh, a product that is, um, that, that's a mulch, and it's SGP+. And we started putting it around the uh, garden, and I was always told by our scientists that it'll kill the plants. It'll, it'll choke them out. Well, that's not what happened. And he, he's the first one to tell me that, that really works. And it uh, it makes the trees grow and it makes the fruit bigger. And it um, and it has a lot of things in it that really help, the, without getting into a lot of detail, what re that really helps the growth of the plant. So And the animal. I heard and, that they're eating 60% less food eating your product and gaining weight. 
Yeah, well, it's not what you eat, it's what you absorb, right? It doesn't yeah. take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And uh, the scientist that we have is a pretty smart guy. He's got a, a IQ that's 30 points over Einstein. And uh, and his job has always been working with companies to take things that were waste products, even at big companies that I won't mention, but and then making them into a revenue stream. And this is what we're doing. When you go by the, the sugar mills, there's 11 of them here in, in the lower Louisiana. Wow. And those, they have, and this comes from the agriculture, the guy head of agriculture here in Louisiana. We don't have piles. We have mountains. <laughs> and they do. It's mountains. And so we're, you know, we're taking that that renewable and turning it into to the best animal feed out there. And again, let's let's go right back to the to the to the real world, and that's called the the uh, business owner. Mm -hmm. And when I tell him, I, I one guy that uh, rents a building from us, he was going to get out of the business and not not raise his black Angus again. He's got a hundred of them, and you'll see videos of them on the on the on YouTube. Uh, and what he said was, I said, I'm going to get out of the business. I said, Why are you going to do that? He said, well, I can't afford to to race cattle. It's just too expensive. Right. And, and if, if you remind me, we should talk about green. Um, so he um, he was spending about three fifty a head per day, three dollars and fifty cents per day. Mm -hmm. And he went to and he was using hay. He was using uh, whatever crude protein he could get at about 50 percent. And he was, you know, just all kinds of costs. And so what what we did is we switched them over to 80 percent, 80 percent SGP plus and 20 percent crude protein. And what he's using is just an in, inexpensive soy corn pellet. Right. And uh, that's his only cost. He went from 350 a head down to 45 cents. Now, and that's not business. taking into effect the less antibiotics that they have to buy for the cows because there's no flies. Right. That doesn't that doesn't add into the uh, fact that they don't have to um, take care of any of the uh, things that go along with sanitation. With uh, sure. go go ahead. Well, even even when a uh, you know it's hard for a for a cattleman not to let his cows go eat grass, and I would never tell them not to you know let them eat grass, but. You should still give them, even in the in the let's say the summer months when you have a lot of grass, you should still be giving them SGP plus because that's going to help digest the grass. Because when they start getting on grass, they got loose movements. So if they got loose movements, well, we've been talking about it. You you're not digesting your food, right? And, uh, so we can help them in all situations, and you don't have to get all this fancy stuff. It's pretty straightforward. I read a book that was uh, written in 1950, and the only way I could get it was to get a PDF through Oxford, England. Ah. And uh, it uh, talked about soil, grass, and cancer. And and he only he didn't know what a GMO was. He was writing based on technology right. from the Civil War to 1950, and that's about when we started using the new uh, fertilizers. And he recommended that the new fertilizers you be very cautious of. And stick to the natural stuff, like uh, put manure, put it put it back in your ground. You know, it, it's uh, it's a better way to do it, uh, and it is. So, when I look at just pure cost savings, what makes change, John? What makes change? And you've seen it, I'm sure. I know the answer to this. It is desperation. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you've got to. You sometimes people have to be forced. <laughs> to try something new. They have no other alternative. And then they're happy they did. And that's yeah. what I think is going to happen with you. I was reading the other day, there's a lot of countries coming down on ranchers and farmers about capturing methane and CO2. I, I saw pictures of rubber bags on the top of cows catching farts. I couldn't, oh, no. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Yeah. And your product cuts down the methane that comes out of the cow, out of its mouth, out of its anus, you cut yep. down the methane and CO2 coming out of the patty. And right now, from what I understand, about 40% of the emissions, the CO2 in the world comes from cattle and farm animals, from, from the farmers. So yep. if we can cut that down, I mean, honestly, 
one cow is equivalent to one car in CO2 each year. Yeah. What? That, that blew my mind. So you aren't just making cows healthy. You're not just helping people become healthy. And we haven't even touched on that yet. But you're helping the world to become healthy. Amen. Like I said, folks, I'm not, I'm not hyping this company up. Mark, you've got a product here that is more than disruptive. It is an answer to a lot of the problems we've been dealing with here for decades. You are disrupting a sector that hasn't moved in a very long time. Well, now, now if we talk about grain, you're going to see how effective this is going to be. For Let's the do it. When you talk about grain, I went to the, um, uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska, I went to the Beef Institute. Uh, they had their, their annual meeting. It was 500 ranchers and and uh, it was it was interesting, but what they said was is that um, there's there's four big places where you get grain. What the United States is one of them. But can you imagine the United States is number five for cattle? Now we're not number one. We're number five. And so now let's look at the the crude protein. Uh, Brazil produces most of the uh, soy. I know we produce soy here, but it's used it's used for a lot of things like plastics in Detroit. Right. And um, the second, so they they are the biggest producer, and they're not shipping any soy right now. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is China. China's got the second largest population. Yeah. Of of, uh, of and they're and they're bringing it in, but they're not shipping anything out. They're, they're right. Working. And then you've got uh, you've got um, India, which is the biggest producer of rice. Now I know we produce rice here, but it's you know again think internally only, uh, and they're not shipping any rice. And I talked to them. I said, I hear you guys aren't shipping rice. They said, No, we haven't done that for two two months. And it was probably four months ago that I that I asked that question. Wow. So you've got all your crude protein is in the United States is really is really stuck on the fact that it's got to come from the United States. So with corn, even though it's GMO corn, um, the, the the corn we're fighting with people like uh, ethanol and uh, all of that. So the amount of, uh, if you look at the commodity exchange, the uh, the cost of hay, the cost of uh, alfalfa, the cost of, of any grains, you know that Ukraine produces 40% of the grain in the world? I did not. I don't see many farmers growing anything over there right now. Not right now. No, they're doing a lot of tilling if you want to consider a bomb in your field tilling, but that's yeah. about as far as they're getting. Yeah. And so when you look at all that, the only the only thing that I see ranchers doing now is they call culling their herds. And oh, culling, wow. culling is another word for killing. It sure is. And uh, then you've got liver problems that are, that are in cattle. Uh, I was talking to one guy that has a... Uh, a feed, not a feedlot, but a slaughterhouse. He's it's so big that he's got ten USDA um, auditors. But in that slaughterhouse, I said, uh, "How are the livers?" Because I know that livers in people, dogs, and animals is, is a problem. He said, well, "I can't even sell a cow liver, not calf liver, but cow liver. Right. I can't sell that for dog food." I said, "You're kidding me." I said, how big's the liver? So he showed me a picture of a swollen liver on a cow, and it was a six-foot man holding it up to his shoulders, and it reached the floor. What? I said, you mean that that cow, that, that cattleman's losing that much weight in, in when he sells his cow? And the right. answer is yes. Swollen liver. So I, he said, I need a calf's liver. You can find those. But he said, try finding a, a cow's liver in the store. In the oh, I no, I've never seen a cow liver. Never. I've always wondered about that. I just thought they were cleaner as calves. I didn't know that they were infected or damaged. Well, they're, they're tumored and swollen. And um, we're taking something that engineers can't reproduce. Engineers can reproduce a heart, and but they can't reproduce a liver. Liver does so many things, including monitoring your blood every every millisecond and making sure it's got enough minerals and everything in it and uh right now we have no minerals in our food and uh i had an interesting thing uh, happened yesterday the guys that run that run our plant in uh, napoleonville for me they're both ranchers and they both use our product right and uh, some of the smartest guys are, are those ranchers as we talked about earlier but he said you know i had something really strange happen i said what's that he said, I bought a salt, a salt block 
a couple of them, and I bought some molasses. Well, molasses they'll eat all the time because that's sugar. Yeah. And it's like giving a diabetic sh uh, sugar, it's not a real good idea. But you know, uh, but he said the cows aren't touching the salt lake at all. They know when they don't need minerals, and you need minerals to process everything in your body. It's wow. like a, right. It it it, uh, it does all of that. So then I called up to a our ranch up in Jefferson, Texas. I said. Here's what uh, the guys told me at, in uh, in Louisiana. He said, what do you find it up in Texas? What are they doing with the salt, salt lakes? He says, you know what? Now that you mention it, I, I can tell by the size whether they're they're going to the salt lake. And he said, it hasn't changed size in a long time. I said, well, keep an eye on that because the cows know what they need to eat. And, uh, and they aren't eating. They aren't eating the mineral blocks. They aren't licking them. How about that? Yeah. All right. You've had a lot of things happen this last month, Mark. That's why we couldn't talk because you were busy. And I'm real excited to hear what has gone on over in India. That's where you've been spending some good amount of your time this last month, isn't it? It's It's been part of it. Our whole team has. We, we've got a really good team. Uh, that yeah, tell me about your team. Well, I've got a scientist and, and uh, he is, as I said, got a 30 point uh, higher average than Einstein. And he's all about taking things that that are waste and moving them into a revenue stream and he's lived in this area for a long time so he knows the the problem with bag ass mm -hmm. um and he's going to be spearheading a project a big project that i'll be announcing soon but um he uh he is so then i've got rhonda which everybody talks to rhonda because she's my my second hand she's and so friendly i like rhonda Oh, yeah. She, and people don't realize she used to have her own TV show. That's yeah. what she told me. I yeah. was impressed. Yeah. yeah. And she she taught me everything I know about public companies because I, <laughs> I I came from a place where if you uh, wanted to take a technology forward, uh, you had to finance it yourself because technologies aren't financed by banks. They want something. They want an asset. And so uh, she taught me a lot about how public companies work. And uh, then uh, the rest of our team is we've got ranchers that run that run the plant, and uh, the the one guy is used to be a, a caterpillar tractor um, uh, guy that went out and repaired engines throughout the world. Oh, and so when I want something done, and, and our team identifies something like we we've, we've been doing lately. Um, he gets it done. They come up with a plan, put a cost on it, just like I'm used to in Detroit. You know, you put a cost on it. And I'll tell you whether I want to do it or whether it's worth it. And so we've been doing a lot of that. We've we've upgraded a lot of the technology in the plant. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed. It, how, about a, how about a sales team to get out there and well, talk to all these ranchers? I've got a lot of people, and everybody wants to work on commission. It's pretty. It's, that's pretty neat. I wouldn't work on commission in the past when I was young, unless I knew that there was uh, a chance I was going to get some commission. Yeah, you got to be good to work on commission. You got to yeah. know your skill. You got to believe in the product. So I've got yeah. Uh, yeah. a group, and I, 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 I won't say their name because every time I say their name, I got people that'll call them up. <laughs> you You're know? learning. You're learning. Yeah. So it's just, uh, but they. Uh, they sell uh, um, cow oilers. Now I thought to myself, cow oilers. What the heck are you tell? You talking about? You, you got a pet a pet cock? Do you grease it? And no, it's a it's an oiling system that is old fashioned, and you walk underneath that, and the cows get an oil that goes on them, and they it helps helps lower the fly level. Oh, okay. And when I when I started getting out there and talking about no flies. These guys, who are about nine of them, and they're at every show in the United States until June. Uh, and in fact, they're they're uh, they already signed up, and we're going to be there. I'm going to go with them uh, up in in uh, Louisiana at uh, West Monroe, where the Duck Dynasty people are. There's a big there's a big yeah, cattle. Show I know them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big cattle show up there, and uh, so I'm gonna. They're at that show, but but. Again, I got, I got, there, there's only so many questions you can ask a guy to like, uh, they'll ask you, what's your crude protein? Well, ask them that first. What's your crude protein? Because it's different everywhere. 
Right. And uh, and if I can take your line item items and I can reduce it, give you more weight gain, which is the outcome. Give right. you more weight gain and give it to you faster. Um, our um, guy that and uh, you that, said it also increases milk production as well in the dairy cows. Yeah, that's a good. I'm glad you brought the point up. It, it is uh, one thing in India is uh, they have access to um, a lot of sugar mills, but at the same time, they you know that's you don't kill a cow in in India. You um, when they're tired and they can't have a mama cow can't have any more babies, they send them out to a local farm and they let them die naturally. Oh, a uh, retirement for cows. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, so more right, like they, have, they have access to 500,000 dairy cows. Wow. Wow. So, so my, my question always is to a dairy, if I can come into your dairy and you don't have to add one asset, have the same amount of assets, you can produce twice as much uh, volume. Is it worth it to you? And no. <laughs> so it doesn't. It could. It, it doesn't have to be a cow. It could be a, a, on any subject with any business fan. If I can double your production without adding one thing, one one more piece of asset, and I can double your production, would you do it? What business fan would say no? It's and a no so, brainer. Yeah, and right now I've got again people that uh, that can't get product to uh, to keep their their uh, volume going or to keep their ranch going because of the things we talked about in the, in this uh, interview, um, it, 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 it opens the door. It opens the door quickly. Um, and I'm getting people that are just coming by to see the plant. I heard you had this and uh, I heard you had something that could, uh, that could soak up oil and, uh, and, and they, but, but it's, you know, we're real visible out there. It's a big plant and we got a big piece of property and, it, it, again, desperation brings change. And the people that bring change are the outsiders. And I'm an outsider. So it it, it fits. I mean, it, it really fits well. Now, just, just a list here because we're covering so much. These are some of the benefits to the product. Uh, the cattle eat 60% less and gain weight. The cows are giving birth to heifers who are healthier and growing faster. They produce more milk. They have no flies. The cows are healthier. We're healthier. Flies are a problem. Less antibacterials are needed for the cows. Less methane coming out of the cow in every single way, which is a big problem on the planet. And this all has to come from Nutramatic, the secret ingredient that you've been working with that has been around forever. Did I cover that pretty good, pretty well? Yeah, and it's um, Nutramastic is is the key to the whole thing in any product we make, as we've discussed. But the the thing is that the technology that we that I created in the press that I, that we have, I I altered it, and it. Uh, I'm not going to get into what it what it does, but I'll get into the result. So <laughs> all the all the things we put into it and the technology that it creates, we spit out a 2,200 pound bale. And you can't put your finger in it. It's so dense. And, um, you know, it, it, here, here's the footprint. And I, I, I'll read this. We okay. create 35 bales per hour. Not per day, but per hour. I got a picture of that. And yeah, that's, it, there you go. And that's 2,200 pounds or 77,000 pounds per hour. Ooh. Uh, then we have, say, say we had a 15-hour shift. Yep. That's. 1100 and or 1 million 155 thousand pounds per week and then if you have a five day you're at five million seven hundred seventy five thousand but i mean the footprint is incredible and you're looking at um there's a guy that wrote an article in uh, he was an indian fellow that wrote an article in um and what he said was that if there is 400 with all, if all the bag ass could be, could be turned into a nutrient that could be digested, mm -hmm. it's a four hundred and ninety point six million dollar, excuse me, billion dollar with a B market worldwide. Ooh! And you know what? I can do that. <laughs> give me the opportunity. If you got, if you got a thousand cows, give me twenty five. 
Let me show you. Yeah. So and, tell us about that. You've got some feedstock programs going on right now in a couple of different states. How have they been working out for you? Working out great. Uh, and a lot of times ranchers won't tell you what they're doing because they don't like giving away their secrets. But I know one thing when they call back to find out what, you know, are we going to, can we load them next Tuesday? What's that tell you? It yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah. It worked. So um, that's what I'm, that's what I'm finding. I had one guy that uh, called me from a dairy that was close by and he says, uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I must have butt dialed you. I said, okay, how you doing? He said, I'm doing good. He says, but you've got to keep that plant going. you got to keep that plant going. So he didn't butt dial me. I, I don't believe. I believe he was just telling me, you got to keep that plant going. And um, so what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve right now, and I will achieve it, is I'm trying to get more material, more weight on a truck. If I can get more weight on the truck, and I will, uh, it'll allow me to take and ship anywhere in the country and do it competitively. So that's some of the trials we're running this week and uh, to confirm it. But anyways, that's, uh, that's the story on that. So give us a little information now about India. I understand that they have bad gas over there, but theirs is a little different than the stuff that's growing here in America. Yeah, and that's a real good question. I got uh, what we found is it's an N, it's an ND fifty fiber. The fiber that we have here in the United States is an ND forty fiber. Now, what does that mean? Yeah. It means that ND fifty fiber is a little bit more digestible, and which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, I've got them like I do with many people. You got to try this to get a value on it, because this commodity is going to go up in price. As people start recognize that it does what it does, it's going to go up. Any any commodity does. So, yeah. with uh, with India or anywhere, I uh, tell them they're going to ship over. They've got a container they've loaded, and they're shipping over their material to us, so I can run it through the machine, which only take me less than an hour. Probably take me as much to unload it as it will to to process it, uh, and then I'll ship it back and let them eat it. And what this better is way? Just a file. This is just to see what their bad gas will, will do. If everything goes well, you would pretty much build a footprint over there in India. In India, yeah, I would build a footprint over there, and that's the uh, what I want them to explain to me is. And we've and we've had those discussions because I I'm, I want to protect our shareholders, and I want to protect me, the shareholder. And, <laughs> right. uh, and so I don't so. I want the footprint to be owned by us, and it will be. And uh, we have a guy that is uh, that is within our team that will go over there and set up the plant and run it. And uh, they'll never know what Nutramastic is. It's that's not a not a simple product, not a simple product at all. And um, we'll go over. And my my goal is to for safety is to run the plant. Now I want to know what is the revenue stream. And that's what we're working on now. What is the revenue stream? When does it, how do we all make money? And that's, that's what we're discussing at this point. So Talking about revenue streams, you are looking for as many revenue streams as you can with your secret ingredients. How many have you got right now and how many do you think you're shooting for? Well, you know, I've, I've always had this dream that uh, I don't make your product, but I make it better. Remember okay. that old commercial? And uh, that's us. I, I might not make your product, but I can make it better. Right. And so when I look at the revenue streams we have, we have the uh, in, intact uh, digest line, which, by the way, I'm probably going to start taking pre-orders for that at uh, the end of December, beginning of January. Uh, I've got product being made right now. And um, that is... Uh, that, that, that is a huge thing for for the market and for our company. And that's uh, just not for people. That's for people, horses. Uh, I, I was looking at your products. I, I was on your website seeing you had quite a lot of different products for the Intex. Yeah, and, it, and you, you know as well as I do, you've got to focus, 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 focus. And so I've been focusing on the, the cow plant 
and uh, the SGP plus plant. Sure. And, uh, and we've, uh, I, I can't be there all the time, but I run it and the processes are mine. And the people that I've taught are, I trust them. They're good. And uh, I am never but a phone call away. But I need to start taking these other revenue streams like the, let's say, the mulch product. Um, and that that product, I've talked to uh, people that actually sell mulch. Well, how'd you like to have the best mulch there is, period? And uh, so those conversations I, you know, I, I, I spark them, I get them going, and then I hand it off to somebody to run. Um, and well, intact is to help people and animals with their digestive. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. we all, yeah, you, you got to remember that every, every uh, non, every, every uh, function that you have in your body from your heart, your lungs, your liver, and your intestines, they all work off, they all work off minerals. And there's 72 ionic minerals and trace minerals. And they work like if they don't, if your body doesn't have them, you don't get the ripple in your intestine. You get a push pull in your intestine. Mm. But really, the way God made it is you, you have a, a rippling effect that moves the product along, the waste along. And, <laughs> and that's how it works. But if you don't have that and you're not getting it from your food, uh, we can give it to you. It is also, there's something called leaky gut syndrome. And leaky gut syndrome is because the, the uh, H. pylori, which is like a black corkscrew, hides behind mucus and drills through your, through your weak protein in, in, uh, digestive system. And uh, so things are getting through your small intestine that are larger than what you're used to, that you're, that you're, you're uh, mucus right. used to. So your T cells, which are like spaceships, they come in and they identify the strawberry that's too big and you ne never were allergic to strawberry and uh, it identifies it, comes down and finds a way to kill it and sends the signal out to the rest of the body. Now you're allergic to that size strawberry. Right, uh, right. And H. pylori, uh, mastic and neutromastic, accelerate and kill it. So you, you, uh, you have things like uh, digestion indigestion, which is ammonia. Uh, your body is loaded with ammonia. And so what, what it does is that you can take that and you can, you can have um, <laughs> acid reflux and it gets rid of it. Wow. And, and it's, not a, it's, not, does, it's not something that is uh, anything but just standard the way your body functions. It helps you get rid of ammonia. And... Right. Um, so like they're, they're, probiotics. It it actually helps helps the probiotic. Oh, good. The, the probiotic can exist under certain conditions. Well, make sure that that condition is not there. And right. so you can't uh, you can't absorb iron. You know the people that make portagons. The biggest problem they have is they got to stop the uh, the uh, production line about every hour to clean the whole vitamins out of the filters. So what's happening? You're not digesting it. And you're not getting it into your system. You need certain minerals. There's three minerals that you need that are ionic, and uh, and you get those from our from our uh, Nutramastic or Intact Digest. Now you have another product which is not for consumption, and I do believe it's using Nutramastic. It's for oil spills and such. Yeah, it's something that was developed uh, a while ago, before I even. Uh, took over the plant, bought the plant, is um, it was developed by LSU. And LSU came with a pressure si system that, um, that not, but the big thing was putting, putting other, th other things in it without getting into detail. And right. um, you could spray it in a, in a spreader. You could spray it on um, bayous, uh, leaves, oil, and it, what it would do is it would soak up the oil and give it what it needed to break it down and it would, it would compost. And uh, so what I've developed is something that doesn't have all that stuff in it, but our machine, if I process it a certain way, can, you can put it on, on an oil spill, it'll soak up the oil 
And, and I've done it in, I do it all the time. Cause I got to remind myself, you know, I'm going to do that again. And I do it in a bucket and I'll put a, a half a quart of oil in a bucket of water and I'll put the, the, uh, we call it Supreme AG. In fact, I keep it in stock. Um, it'll soak up the oil off the top. And once it's in the fiber, it starts going to the bottom. And what it's doing is it's, it, bag ass will soak up oil, but it doesn't absorb water. And people th- feel that, what do you mean? If you go over there and the uh, bag ass is wet and there's, you know, it, it's all wet. Right. Yeah. But you don't realize it holds water like a cup. Oh. And, but it absorbs oil naturally like a sponge. So, so now, could they have used this product with the Exxon spill on the ocean? It uh, could have been used in a, in a, but not as effective. Like right now, they've got a big oil spill out on uh, in the Gulf that is, uh, they said is a million and a half gallons. A lot of guys tell me it's probably three times that. Well, right. you know what? They should be using our product. I could spray it on there and take care of that, and it will take it to the bottom, but it's gone. It uh, it it will compost and turn it back to mud. Hmm. So uh, I like that. I really, I mean, you're talking all these fixes aren't just helping the person or the animal. Every single one of them have repercussions and ripple effects that are globally affecting the world in a positive manner. Your product is really exciting to me. And the fact that it's been around forever and, and we're just now getting back to it. I don't know if I'm excited or dismayed, but it's, it's good to hear all of this. You know, I have the same reaction. I don't know if I'm excited or dismayed because when people get into a habit, it is impossible for to get them to change unless there's a disaster. And, um, and, it, you know, and it's a very unfortunate because a lot of things get affected by that uh, because people won't change. And well, in that case, desperation has got to be coming into your field big time with the drought, with the prices of these grains and these feed going up and up with uh, farmers getting pressure from the governments to have to take care of methane and CO2. All of this has just got to be a big, big catalyst for your company. It is a big catalyst. And uh, I'm, we're spending a lot of time um, answering calls, going out to places. And I, you know, like say the, the team is, we're, we're all going. That's why I got the, uh, that group that, uh, that uh, I just talked about in one of the uh, letters to the shareholders is that uh, we, we, there's, I have super sacks that are, that are sitting on in the plant. Super sacks. I, I got a picture yeah. of that. <laughs> Go for yeah. it. So the super sacks, I, you know, I had a conversation with a guy that, uh, that uh, was in the government and he says, uh, you know, I got I got a, uh, does it, will that work on feeding deer? And I said, well, you know, I don't know, but let me tell you, let me tell you what my reasoning is. When I go up to Michigan, deer love carrots. You see it; the carrots are everywhere when they're they're hunting yeah. season. I said, but down here, I'm told that the deer like soft things like the the the, the uh, moss that hangs from the trees. And he said, yeah, they do. And I said, well, so if I get a call from a guy that says we're two guys in a tree that like to hunt and we like to try the product. I'm not going to give them free anything because I really, I really can't guarantee anything and I'm not going to get good information back. All right. So I, I got a guy that has, uh, that raises deer, prize deer, and he could give you that data. I said, then come on down. I'll give him a free super sack as long as I get information back from him. I heard you had uh, some feedstock testing with goats and that went real well. Yeah. Uh, I heard, heard you had somebody ask about chickens. <laughs> Well, you know, if there's data out there, my my scientist is is digging up data that is, if you know how to do it, you get, you know, the thing in science, you got to ask the right question. If you, if you don't, right. you got to take some time to discover what the question is, and then if you ask the right question, you can find stuff. Well, there's stuff on on uh, chickens and eating bag ass, and I didn't think chickens ate anything but bugs and uh, right. and, and gravel, <laughs> but uh, but they do very well eating. Uh, eating uh, things like bag ass, in fact, specifically, and uh, there's a re- there's actually a report. So the science collectively is out there on everything we're talking about. So I had one one guy that was uh, high up in the government. He says, "Well, you need to get a full report 
on everything that's going on in your product. And I said, you know what? I said, that's a million dollars. That's a million dollars. The right. information's out there right now, collectively. I've got a few pieces that I want to put together, and I'll be doing that shortly, uh, that, uh, that with all that collective data and the other tests that I want to do, is, which is based on our different kind of product that we make with Nutramastic, I said, there, there's no reason to do a million dollar, uh, a million dollar study. Now, and if you were to have a, a university do a study of your product, that, that wouldn't be free either. So do you anticipate any time in the near future, the next year, getting a university to do some testing on your products? That's a, that's a very direct good question. And I got to tell you that I'm, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Because again, a little company, as you said, has to focus not just their energies, but their finances. You don't want to spread yourself out too thin. I like the way you were saying about creating that equipment. You're not reinventing something. You're changing something that's already in existence to meet your needs. That's saving you a lot of money and time. So I can see you're a, a wise businessman and you don't want to be too fast. But as investors, we definitely want to see where you're going. Well, and, and when I look at equipment, uh, you know, I've got one piece of equipment we use all the time. I found that in a field and I rebuilt it. And what what is the cost on that machine? Nothing. And uh, but it runs very well. I got another machine that uh, a bagger that I found in a field and I rebuilt it on my weekends and uh, it now is fully functioning and <coughs> excuse me is uh, is a great piece of equipment. So when you look around our plant all of our equipment's paid for. All of it. I don't have that debt hanging out over my head. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, even the, even what we owe on the equipment, or not excuse me, the equipment, the property, we've got a, we've got a very valuable piece of property. And it, um, you know, the, what we owe on it is not very much. So talking about these footprints, how long do you think it'll be before you actually start building a facility somewhere else? Uh, I would say by the time I ship product back, probably, the, probably looking at um, March, March 1st. Oh, that soon. That yeah. is excellent. Well, we got to get a lot of testing done. And that's, that's predicated on the fact that, um, that we get that on the ship and we can get it back on the ship. Right, right. Takes about a month to get here, a month to get back. Yeah, and not, not much you can do to change that. Now, since we're speaking about this, shipping stuff in trucks, shipping stuff in tankers, I was hearing that your product can actually stop the rot that goes on in these transfers down at the bottom and all that bacteria starts to eat away at it. Your product can stop that as well. Well, it, we did some testing with a, with a company in uh, New Orleans that does 85% of the agricultural testing. And they've got places in Oregon and uh, also in Scotland. Um, what we, what, what a, and I never knew this until I talked to them about their the problem is that uh, the average shipload loses 25% of its crop, agricultural crop, to rot. 25%? Yeah. Now, the, the kicker is that when it rots, it creates methane gas, so their insurance goes up. So now if that sounds I, like a hazard too, I mean, that could explode, right? Oh yeah. And hazards are, are, are a change that you have to create. So oh, what man. I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is uh, not trying to, I can, I come up with a spray system that I can spray it into a ship as the, as the uh, material is going in and, um, and we can, we can change the way they're doing it. This is just, it's as I said, a list as long as my arm of benefits from a very simple ingredient that a smart man like you knows how to put to use. I'm just excited. I mean, you're going from animals to saving 25% of every ship. I don't know how much food that is, but that is, I was going to say a ton. No, it's tons and tons and tons of food being wasted, thrown away. 
Yep. So your product is going to save money. doesn't matter how much it costs. Your product is just the beginning of their savings. You start adding in all those other bottom lines that they have to pay for to deal with. They're getting a product for free with Amen. all the money that they're saving with everything else. They have got a free product. I don't see how you can't be successful, Mark. I see your companies answering more questions than people are asking yet. I I see the same thing, and uh, I, I got to remind the naysayers that just because you build it, they don't come. Ain't that the truth? You know, it, it and if it's different, man, you got to do some selling. And it's a good thing I got a hard German head because I just keep, I just keep going. I believe in this. And just I, off it, the top of my head, I was thinking about this the other day. I watched your little four minute video that was very concise, gave a lot of good information. You ever thought about doing an infomercial for America, for all the farmers? I mean, they're up early enough. You could get it on the right channel at four in the morning and they may actually catch it. You know, I, I do. I, I think about a lot of that. Um, and, but the problem I have right now is time. I need to create, I need to create revenue so we're not relying on anything else but revenue to drive this company and uh, like i it's like why i brought up the fact that you know the naysayers will say you know why don't they have this or why don't well you know what i got a plant that we don't owe anything on and just because you build it they won't come you got to go get them you got to drag them and you got to you got to dress you know thank god desperation uh, is a kicker right now, but uh, you know I hate to have that happen. But that is what's going on, so it just takes time. And um, you know, if if anybody wants to see what we're going through, go see Field of Dreams. Just because you build the field doesn't mean they're going to come. Do you have any new customers lined up? We have a lot of them that are that are lined up, and I can't talk about them. But um, I'm, I'm, uh, there's, there's feed, there's a, a key feedlot that we have that's right in the middle of a bunch of feedlots. Mm -hmm. And we've got some of the guys that, uh, that are on, on these feedlots that say, well, you know, uh, I got to have what's your crude protein and what's this? What, it, it, it's like, you know what? I've seen a lot of guys like you, you don't want to change. So I'll tell you what, we'll go change your guy next door. And you'll change because that's your competitor. Well, and they're still in the old school. They're asking the oh, old yeah. questions. That's right. That's right. And yeah. uh, they need to be educated. <laughs> and there's a there's a great LSU school that is um, that is uh, not far from here, and they uh, they are the standard for sugar cane, and it's called the Audubon School, and they. They know everything about bag ass, sugar cane, whatever. And every one of the uh, 11 sugar mills down here send their molasses over to be tested on a weekly basis during production. And production time for sugar cane right now is between October and January 1st, roughly. Mm -hmm. And um, it is amazing. You know, we were talking collective knowledge. It's, it's amazing the collective knowledge that's out there right now. And, um, and, and all of it points to us. I mean, when I, when I go to, to meet with somebody like that and they say, you know, I'm really glad we had this meeting. I learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, you're an answer. You, if, if farmers and ranchers literally open up their minds, let go of the past, the way we've always done things, start mm -hmm. looking towards the future. And it may take desperation to do that if that's what it takes, but the change has got to come. It has to come. We have an overpopulation. We're going to have a lot more meat we're going to need. Beef is in demand. Milk is in demand. We've got to be careful about their health. When I was in Scotland, beef was a problem. We always had to monitor our beef because of hoof and mouth disease, mad cow disease. And a lot of that was coming from insects coming across the waters from Europe over into our country, which our animals were not accustomed to these bugs. Sure. So- Change can happen at any moment. A fly, a, an insect could infect all of our animals very, very quickly. You're looking at something that is going to safeguard our food, that is going to clean up the atmosphere. What other, what other company is doing that? 
This is why I'm excited about your company. You're answering questions that we need answers to now, but nobody's really working on. And yours is a simple, simple product. You know, it's not all that difficult to use. Feed your cows, feed your deer, feed your goat. Give it to people. Save our food in the ships. I love your product. I really like your company. There's been a lot of buzz about you for the last two months online. I've been noticing your charts have been getting a lot more activity. You're hitting new highs on volume. So I think people are starting to recognize your company trader wise. But we need to get your information out there to farmers, to ranchers. So all of you traders out there, if you know people in this business, spread this video out, spread his information, take his site and give it to him. Believe me, your friends will thank you for it later. I'm going to thank you for it now. I appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. And I, like I say, tell your friends and have them call that 800 number. They'll probably get me or somebody like me and we can, uh, we can get some testing done. You don't have to give me your whole herd. Let me show you on a smaller herd that I can do that. And it's not something you got to wait six months or you got to wait three months or even a month. You'll start seeing it happen the first week you get on the product. That's exciting. That's what people want. Fast results. That's the society we live in. Yep. And it, um, even if you go up to our ranch in uh, Jefferson, Texas, you can see the results now. Um, so it, it's all we're asking for is a chance. You know, it um, sounds like Mark's invited you over too, folks. If you're in the re region, stop on in. I'm sure Mark will give, give you a tour. Won't you, Mark? Oh, yeah. And the food is good. <laughs> Mark, is there anything we didn't touch on to here that you might want to say before we end this? Um, no, you were very thorough, and I appreciate the the opportunity. I'd love to come back and tell you the success stories. Oh, you are invited. Anytime you call me, and I will set you up. And if I got to wait for you, I'll wait for you, Mark, because you're worth it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Couldn't ask for more. Thanks, folks, for stopping in and watching. Uh, we have more information. I didn't get to it all, so do your due diligence. You know I always say that, folks. We can't cover everything. That's on you. It's your money. Thanks for your time, folks. We'll catch up with you next time. See ya.